Hi, everybody. Are we stuffed? It's a shame we came after lunch because now everybody is full and I'm going to be talking about food. Um, but yeah, um, I'm from Zimbo Kitchen. Um, it's a food vlog. <laughs> I don't know how many of us have been on Zimbo Kitchen or have heard about it. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so um, tips on monetizing your passion. Um, for me, cooking is, is a passion. And so I had to find a platform where I could share that, platform, um, that passion. Um, I know many of us have got different passions. Some can be monetized depending on how you present it or where you are. And some may, you may need to you know, move to something else in order to monetize if that's what you're after. Um, one of the simplest and easiest ways to monetize your passion is through the use of technology, um, such as having platforms like WordPress. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a brief history on how Zimbo Kitchen started. Um, we began in 2012. Um, so this is our sixth year. So we just started, <laughs> we started in um, our home kitchen, just with what we had, you know, because um, just one day, my husband and I were just talking about the Zimbabwean um, women and men, what would interest them, um, and in, in line with what I like to do and how can we put it out there for everybody to appreciate it. I've got, we've got three daughters. So one of the things I was thinking about is I need some way where I can share my recipes with them in the event that I'm no longer there and they need to learn how to cook. They can always go online. Number two, we've got a lot of young people who don't know how to cook, and grown-ups as well. Um, and not to just cook anything, but also our Zimbabwean food. Uh, if you ask a 16-year-old who should be able to cook by now, how do you make pumpkin leaves, mubora, for example? They, will, they won't know how to. Or how do you make mazondo? cow hills. They'll struggle. So the website is a platform where they'll be able to go on there. When we started, it was step-by-step -step pictorial tutorial. So you could see at each and every stage, this is what it should look like now, this is what it should look like now, and your final result. So, um, no, he's still there. <laughs> um, so we decided that we also needed, um, you know, we've got a lot of uh, relatives and family and friends in the diaspora, and they get, some are getting married there. And so we've got uh, in-laws that are not Zimbabwean that may want to know how do we prepare our dishes, how do we do our food, and want to surprise their spouses or, you know, teach their children. And so Zimbo Kitchen is also a platform where um, others that are in the international community can access and see what Zimbabwean food is about. Um, we were featured on CNN African Startup, the web, web page, um, for showcasing Zimbabwean food. Um, so it's something that people want to know what, you know, different cultures. If you go to um, Dubai, for example, you want to experience their food there. What do they eat? You know, you don't want to go and eat um, burgers and fries because that's common everywhere. So if people come to Zimbabwe, they want to know what do people eat here and, and try that and taste it. And if they want to go back and replicate it, they can also do it using the recipes we have on site. Um, so we decided to choose a domain. Um, the name, of course, Zimbabwe Kitchen, representing Zimbabwean kitchen. What happens in the Zimbabwean kitchen? So you find that we do have other recipes of 
um, things that are not traditionally Zimbabwean because we have the ingredients in the supermarkets and we have embraced the other cuisines as well. So you do have recipes on pasta, on rice and all that because it's things that we do eat as Zimbabweans. Um, and as well, hosting of the, the, the site. Then we had to choose the content management system. Um, at this stage, I want to hand it over to Arthur, and then he's going to take you through a bit how we then progress. Thanks, Wendy. Um, okay, on the... Oh, sorry, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Arthur, yeah. yeah. Uh, so on the content management system, it was quite natural for us to go with uh, WordPress because even prior to launching Zimbo Kitchen, I had been working with WordPress on other projects that I was doing. So it was a natural transition in terms of uh, now applying it on, uh, on Zimbo Kitchen. So um, obviously the next thing was once we decided on the CMS, the theme we were going to use. Uh, at that time, I wasn't really like um, a developer. So we had to go on, on Theme Forest. I think that's where we bought our first theme, which wasn't really even customized for uh, Zimbo Kitchen specifically. It was just a recipe theme, as you know. It's got fields where you put your ingredients um, and, and, and whatnot concerning uh, you know, publishing recipes. So that's what we bought and we installed on the site. The focus was to really get going. So it wasn't so much about being held back um, about what content management system to use, what theme it must be, but we wanted to get the word out as quickly as possible. So obviously, uh, WordPress being what it is, very easy to install and get started. We, uh, it was a natural choice, and then we, 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 we got such a, also a simple theme that would go with that, and we, we, we started publishing. Uh, key things that emerged, obviously, as we started was the support. As you know, um, WordPress changes, there are new versions that come, themes change in response to new version updates. So there was need for constant um, support to the, to the website, security issues that we talked about in the, in, the, in, the, in the morning. So some of these things I already knew, but then um, you know, I had to, to do a bit of more reading in order to be able to give support to the, um, to the, to the website. That also included the, the customization in certain areas that we needed to customize the, um, uh, the website or the blog. But this, of course, happened gradually as time progressed. It didn't happen um, right at the beginning in 2012. Like I said, we just got a theme, we installed WordPress, and it started running. So as the years progressed, that's when we looked into issues of customization. Initially, we had somebody whom, whom we hired, um, a developer, who um, was also a friend, but also paid for the work to do any support work, any serious support work that we needed to do. But as I trained myself reading online, I then began to learn also how to do uh, manual backups uh, downloading files via FTP, backing up the database and things like that. Even though we're also using plugins, you know, to to back up the site, but we also had the manual process of backing up the uh, the site. Most important of all was monetization, which I must emphasize. We didn't think about that at the beginning. What was important was to get the message out, to communicate the content, and then get people interested in what we are doing. And then we began to think about monetization. So obviously the way we would approach it, it was talked about in the morning, is that we had a consistent pattern of publishing the, uh, our content. Sort of like we trained our audience to expect content um, every day. When we started, we were publishing every day. So the strategy that we took was that whatever we're eating that day, we converted it into a recipe for the blog. So that way we generated a lot of content over a very short period of time. And people began to expect something every day from us. So that way we quickly begin to build an audience. We went on Facebook, the social media to support that effort. Um, social media, Facebook in particular, being what it is, people are on bundles and things like that. It was much easier for them to connect with the recipes than coming to the site itself. So those are the strategies that we use. So monetization then came in naturally. I think we began to get calls from brands uh, who recognize the work that we are doing. I don't know the earlier ones. Uh, I think we did a very big gig with National Foods. Um, you may know there's a product that they released called Chimodo. Um, you know, uh, Premix, it's Modo Premix. You know, Chimodo is like a band, I don't know, the younger ones, you know, that used to be very popular. So National Foods was trying to reach out to, to appeal to the Zimbabwean population with that Premix. 
Uh, so they called us in. We started to do specific gigs for them to develop the recipe, which they then eventually converted into, uh, into a product for the, for the shop. We did quite a number of things with them. So basically the point being the blog itself is what um, made these corporate organizations recognize uh, the work that we're doing. So that's when the monetization aspect kicked in. I know some other um, bloggers do monetize using uh, Google AdSense, uh, but frankly, Google AdSense did not pay much, uh, or even now, it doesn't pay much, simply because of the region that we are in, the ads that appear there, they, they end very little, even when you, when you convert. So it has never been our main line of monetization. Uh, what we have done is, apart from the, um, the corporates that, uh, that require our services, we have also focused on developing our own products. If you have come across some of the books, the digital books that we do, um, now we have got subscription-based uh, subscription uh, services on, on WhatsApp. All those are spin-offs from um, um, you know, the blog itself. So the blog is more like the central place where you find Zimbo Kitchen, and we have used that to build credibility, trust, and following, which we then have converted into, into money, if you want to put it straight uh, bluntly. SEO, search engine optimization, was also critical. And I think that's one great thing about WordPress. I think from the start, it was just built to be search engine friendly. So even before you start doing your own SEO on it, it's already optimized for search engines. So when we installed, when we continued to use WordPress as, as, as CMS, I think at the beginning we did put some plugins. But there are basic things that you can do. I think uh, one of the presenters in the morning I just spoke about uh, the permalinks. Okay, those are basic things of optimization. So, so much that even if you don't do much, just by getting the permalinks correct, you can get your, um, your blog uh, properly ranked. And that is important, um, especially for us as well, because now, even right now in this room, if you go on Google, um, if you want to go on Google and search how to make SADSA, and you see what comes up as number one result. So, Zimbo Kit. Go on, yeah, go on google.com, search how to make SADSA, yeah. I think there's a video that comes up, sorry, and, um, and the blog post itself. And it, it's been there on the first position for years. And in search engine, in the search engine optimization industry, it's well known that it's tough to maintain number one position uh, because of the competition out there. But because of the content um, and the relevance to our audience, it's been there for, for a long time. Social media also played a very important role. I mentioned earlier, um, Facebook is where we have a major presence. We also use, um, we've been on and off uh, Twitter, uh, mainly because of the audience there. I think at this point in time, Facebook uh, seems to be the one that, uh, uh, that delivers quite well on our, um, you know, on our strategy. So that's what it's been um, in as far as the tech side of it. Uh, so in a nutshell, my role at Zimbo Kitchen is to give Rumbi the tech support that, that she needs. Um, I then, the story is that I then developed myself to become a developer, um, WordPress developer, and, and, and also other development languages that I, that I use. Okay, I'll hand over to Rumbi, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm just going to give a few tips on how you can um, uh, improve on your blog or and eventually monetize it. Um, first thing is to identify a niche area. Um, like I mentioned, when we started Zimbabwe Kitchen in 2012, if you tried to search for any um, Zimbabwean dish, you wouldn't find anything. If you try to search for maguru, how do I cook maguru, for example, um, you would, you'd be, um, Google would just grab um, a Japanese guy because, you know, um, Japanese and Shona somehow, some, they are kind of the same. So you get profiles of Japanese folks um, and that's not what you want. But now if you, if you search for how to cook maguru, you will get what you want. Um, so find your niche area. Uh, what is it that's low-hanging fruit that you can jump on and start working on? I was speaking to somebody yesterday, and he was saying, maybe I should start blogging too. And I was like, what do you enjoy doing? And he said, I like traveling, but 
I have to I have to improve or increase my profile on traveling. I have to go around some more before I start. And I was like, no, you can start with Zim um, and then increase on the different countries that you visit as you go. Because you were saying if you go online now and you try to find out about different areas in Zim for tourism, there isn't much information. So find a niche area. What's missing? What's your target market? Um, who do you want to, to communicate to and go for it? Then build an audience. Um, as Arthur was saying, that when we started then, we were posting every day um, because people want to know that your blog or site is reliable. So build an audience, post as often as you can, and something that is of relevance that people would want to, to hear. Uh, which also touches on consistency in content, and then become an authority in your chosen niche area. Uh, research, do more research on whatever it is that you're writing about. Uh, build yourself and, uh, yeah, become the authority. Be the go-to person uh, in that niche that you've chosen. And then, of course, use of multimedia you know, a lot of visuals are good for people when they want to learn or uh, are checking out something. So photography, videos, uh, now we've uh, GIFs. Um, yeah, all of that is good on, on, on your blog. Also, email, embed email, uh, mailing list with your, with your blog. Get the details of the people that come to your site and then create a relationship with them. Um, because on my mailing list, uh, I communicate with the people that are there. When we, and then when you have a product that you want to promote and you send it to them, they are confident to get it because you communicate with them. I would have people, if you, want to, if you wanted to sell a book on Facebook, for example, some people would then say, how do we know you're not going to steal our money? because they were not on the mailing list. They didn't know um, what Zimbo Kitchen is about. So create a mailing list, have a relationship with, your, um, with the people on your list, and you can monetize as you go. Um, and then, of course, use WordPress, because it's simple. It's a plug and, and, and play kind of thing. Um, and and you'll, you'll be on your way, set. So that is basically it. That is Zimbo Kitchen for you. Um, I'll be ready to take any questions. Um, if you don't mind, I just want to add something concerning mailing list. I think as a tip, just to emphasize what Fumbi said. If you're blogging, make sure you, you, from day one, start collecting email addresses. Okay. Uh, develop a package um, into fitness. I think um, fitness bear. I'm not sure, uh, I've been on your blog briefly. Um, I mean, for you, I see you, what you're doing. You can put together a, a giveaway, for example. Just a simple giveaway, maybe three exercises or 10 exercises, okay, in a PDF, nicely designed with the graphics. Package it and use that to collect email addresses. For example, you can say, if you sign up, uh, then I'll give you this free uh, package, you know, which gives you maybe a seven-day exercise program, something like that. Over, over time, you collect that, you find that you have a, a loyal audience that you're building over time. Even when you don't have an idea of what product you want to have, when you have that product, that mailing list is going to be a gold mine for you. Okay, you can take it, as I've said, a gold mine for you. I'll give you an example. When we, um, when we did our first PDF book, uh, the idea was to send an email um, and then say we have released a book this book, I think at that time it was real US dollars, five dollars or something, four ninety nine. Um, it was nine dollars actually when we started. This was real dollars, okay. And then we had to shoot an email to say we have got the book that is ready. So that day we just took it as a casual day in the morning. We shot the email. I tell you, we're not able to to eat or to bath until five p.m. <laughs> because of the purchases that were happening. It was a manual purchase when someone would send EcoCash, then you have to go onto a platform, onto the platform, we're using eJunkie, and then send a download link for someone to download their, their ebook. So throughout the day, I think that day we made $1,000 by the end of the day because of the sales that were just coming in. So 
a mailing list is critical if you are thinking about monetizing your blog in the future. It doesn't have to be today when you start selling, but people, trust me, people will remain on your mailing list as long as you are providing valuable content for years to come. We have people that have been on our mailing list since the beginning. Now it's about six years. And these are loyal customers that we sell to. We are not just selling because we want to sell or get money out of them, but we are exchanging dollars for value. Okay. Questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So on that one, if you want to compare, when we started, that's another thing. Um, I just want to quickly comment and say, don't let anything stop you to get started. I think if you go to the archives and dig way back, 2012, you'll see the images that we have there are quite different uh, from what we have today. So it's because when we started, we had a point and shoot uh, camera, so we just started to get started. It's been a project on the cards. We are doing it slowly to go back and update the old images. But the point is we wanted to get started. We did not allow equipment to stop us. So from the money that we made over, over time, we invested in camera equipment and all that we need to, to continue investing in the business. Yeah. Okay, um, just quickly, the WhatsApp platform, um, it's, a, it's another spin-off, it's a subscription-based um, platform where I send um, recipe ideas, um, so it's, it would be a picture and a recipe, um, and you're free to ask questions on the recipe, as well as uh, pastry lessons. Um, also, it's a different package. I've got different packages. So I've got the recipe ideas. I've got pastry lessons. And those ones are step-by-step -step pictorial. And then I've got um, fundamentals of cooking classes. So the very basics. Um, well, you would be surprised. It, it includes things like knife skills and um, spices and herbs and all that to yeah, just get somebody off when they're cooking, to know what they're doing in the kitchen. Yeah.
Um, you know, what we've realized is that um, with the platform and the audience that it has created um, and the opportunities that we are seeing, the sky is the limit. There's an opportunity to branch into all kinds of things. It's all about when we are ready to do that. That includes um, TV, uh, that includes publications, physical copies of books. I think the culinary industry is quite huge and you know, it's just big. Yeah, so for the future, we do have um, you know, where we want to be in future. Um, yeah, so we do have sort of a roadmap of where we want to, to, to get to. But what I can say right now is that um, once you build credibility and that you know, we, we are happy with the feedback, I think you can, you can take it anyway. And also, as I said earlier, um, as shown by the brands themselves that sell the ingredients that the consumers um, consume.